bawang mo. May tilapia din pala dito. Mm, tilapia. Maputi yung tilapia nila. Ano yan? Yung buro nila, oh. Sa, masarap yan. Yan, oh. Bagong pitas, oh. Sarap yan. Bagong pitas, oh. Masarap yan. Mandarin. Masarap lang kung maasim. Hindi yan maasim, oh. Bagong pitas, eh. Inog na. Oh, kawawa naman yung saging nila, oh. Ayan no, masarap yung ano nila pipino na yan. How was the tour? Enjoy. Kabayo oh. Tiyan mo pa, oh, bagong pitas, oh. Wala pa siyang, ano, oh, tingnan mo yung halata na wala pa siyang lagay na gamot. Maputla-putla na, ano, na to, na, mga tilapia, oh, may biya. May, titindari ba siya? atas ni lau. Ayo nyun dits. Ayo nyun dits o. Antamin dits. Ayah no sarap nang orange o sariwa. Ayah nyun dits pa o. Kain din pala sila niyan. Just come 
mga bata. Eh. May divisoria pala dito eh. Ito na tilapia o tsaka hito. Oh, yung tinapay nila o. Oh. Ba't ganyan yung tinapay nila? Tinapay nila oh. Oh, tingnan yung tinapay nila oh. Ano kaya lasa nun? Ano kaya lasa niyan? Ano kaya lasa niyan? bagong museo ginagawa iyan yung bagong museo mas malaki siya National Egyptian Museo di pa tapos okay we are almost there we are getting close to the place where the church is So please take uh, the bottle of water with you because we might be outside there like for an hour or something. So we need to have the water with us. 
is going to be, we have a little walk there. We have a little walk, so it's better to take the water going there. Okay, here we are. So we go to the churches here. After here, we go to. These here are made of the building. What? They are made on the wood first, and then one layer of gifts, and then one layer of plain and work, one layer of gifts again, and then hammer and clean of gold to cover this one from the outside. All this new here, this is this is made of gold. You know, covering this. Uh, this shrine to this box is from the house.
el octavo. Es de oro macizo. 110 kilogramos de oro macizo de 24 gramos. Dentro del octavo está la mano. Y aparte de esto tenemos la máscara de lado. La máscara de lado. Well, the magnitude of it.
Okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we go to visit the pyramids. We get to see the greatest one, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. That one was built by the king Kiyaps. Kiyaps. Okay, but I'll meet Kiyaps. This is Kiyaps. Can you imagine the king who built the greatest building ever in history? The pyramids. The greatest pyramid, the greatest building in history. He lived this small statue for himself. There is more. Can you imagine that? This pyramid, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It was the highest building in the world in the middle of the last century. This is the smallest statue we have in the Egyptian Museum. Okay, and this one is done by the stone. This one is made of ivory. 
This is seven centimeters of height. This is seven centimeters of height. And the only statue we found for this great King Kiyas. What you see around here in this room, these are the furniture of his mother. The furniture of the mother of the King Kiyas. And here actually in this box here, we can see the four organs. These are the four organs of the mother of Kiyas. For audience, Sama lagi kamu ane bro, pun sama lagi anak ni. Papa.
o dyan.
That's very good. What kind of stone is this one? Marble. Marble. Very, very good. This is a very, very good quality of marble. You know, what is very well known about the marble is the transparency. And this is, we can see it. Sarcophagus, but this sarcophagus, this is not to keep the bed inside. This sarcophagus it was to keep something else inside. Talking, talking about the death, about the afterlife, that leads us, or actually it makes us to talk even a little bit about the mummification in Egypt in the ancient times. The mummification. The question is, the question we have here, how do we mummify the people in Egypt? How do we mummify the people? And I should to be honest, Nobody ever can tell that we know everything about it. Because if we know everything about it, we would make it. Oh. But because we cannot make it, so it means that there is something missing about it. But what we know about the mummification that they were taking between they were taking between 40 and 70 days to mummify one body. Between 40 and 70 days to mummify one body. How do we know about it? This is, we found it written in something, we call it medical papyrus rules. Medical papyrus rules. But this is also emphasized by the Bible. The Bible? What does the Bible have to do with the multiplication? Yes. From the Bible, we know that Jacob's came here to Egypt. Do you remember when Joseph came to Egypt? And Jacob's his father came up. He lived and he died. So what the Bible says? The Bible says, Thank you. 
Names. Kings in ancient time were having five names for themselves. Birth name, 
birth name, death name, coronation name, and two names for upper and lower age. Birth name, death name, coronation name, and two names for upper and lower age. These are the five names for the upper and lower age. Whose king is this? Maybe I make my my room or my house one day only and then don't make it again.
But these are all just inscriptions on the walls. What the king gonna do with this is, with this inscription? He's not gonna get up and eat the whole. No. They were writing, writing, something like magical spells. You know the magical spells? Magical formula? Abracadabra? Writing inside. When the king repeats all of these magical spells, everything here will turn to come true. And the king can use it down. Okay? Something else we're keeping here. They were keeping 365 of the small statues. 365 of the small statues. Why this number of the statues? Exactly. One for each of them. Even these small statues, after repeating some of the magical spells, Abracadabra, all of these will turn to be real servants and slaves. And each one will serve the king each day of the days of the year. So now in the upper left, the king he will has the food, the drinks, and also some people to serve him in the upper left as well. Okay, you got this? Giza and Calupeya. So that's why the pyramids we visit tomorrow, we call them the pyramids of Giza. Pyramids of Giza. So here we have Cairo on the eastern side, we have Giza and Calupeya and the western side of the map. So these three districts together, this make the greater Cairo, which is the capital for Egypt. It's like, you know, in Manila, you have Manila, you have Metro Manila, you have Makati. You know, these all together, they make still Manila, which is the capital. Okay, so we can see the great Manila, which is the capital. Like we see the great Cairo is the capital. Okay, here Cairo is the capital, but actually Cairo, it's not the first capital. Cairo, it's not the first capital. I mean, Cairo is a capital since almost 1,000 years. 1,000 years. But the oldest capital for Egypt is 3,200 before Christ. 3,200 before Christ. Let me tell you something about Egypt from the ancient times. Have you heard of the Pharaonics? The Pharaohs? Pharaohs? Pharaonics people from the ancient times? In the ancient time, Egypt Sorry. Egypt was not one country like today. Egypt was divided into two countries. We had a country at the south, we call it Upper Egypt. And another country at the north, here we call it Lower Egypt. So, Upper and Lower. Why Upper and Lower? Because the land, the south is more higher than the land of the north. Here. And that's why we have the Nile, it's streaming from the south to the north. So the south is Upper, the north is Lower. We got this? There was a king, there was a king for each country. King of the south, he was wearing white crown above his head. White crown above the head. King of the north, he was wearing red crown above the head. Okay? Lotus flower, we know the lotus flower was the symbol, with the symbol for upper region of the south. And papyrus flower, you know the papyrus? It was the symbol for the north here, the region. But, in 3200 before Christ, the king of the south, he conquered the north. And then he unified the two countries together to be one country. Since that time, Egypt turned to be one country, not to be more two countries. And since that time also, all the kings of Egypt, they started to wear the double crowns above their heads. The white one and the red one. And we can see lotus flower and papyrus flower, or papyrus flower, they are tied, tied together like this to be as a symbol of the unification between the south and north. This king, when he moved the south to the north, in the north here he founded a new capital for the United Egypt. And he called this capital Hedge. Hedge or the White Walls. And later this name was changed to be Memph or Memphis. Memph or Memphis. This is Memphis Giza, not Memphis Tennessee. Okay, Memphis. And Mem or Memphis, this name is mentioned in the Bible. The city is mentioned in the Bible. Mentioned in the Bible under the name of Nuf. Nuf, N-U-F. 
No. Because there is a prophecy about this capital or about this city. The prophecy is God is coming to destroy all the idols, all the idols of Nuf, that there will not be any stone standing above another stone. This is the prophecy. This prophecy you can read about it in Ezekiel, in the book of the Ezekiel from the Old Testament. Okay? And actually that's what happened. When we discover this city, when we discover this city, we found ruins, stones, statues, many things, but we didn't find any stone standing above another stone. Okay? So the prophecy came true. And that's what happened. So, Memphis or Nuf, this is... Can you see the church for that? The church? This is not just a church. This is a cathedral. Cathedral? This is a Coptic, Coptic Orthodox. Coptic Orthodox Cathedral. This is the seat of the Patriarch. Okay. You know, here we have the majority of the Egyptians are Muslims. We have 20% are Christians. But here, the majority of the Christians here, they are Coptic Orthodox. Coptic Orthodox. Here there is a Bob. There is a Bob for the Orthodox Church. Okay, this is different from the Bob of Rome. Okay, so here there is a Patriarch for the Coptic Orthodox Church. Yeah. But also here we have so many of the Catholic churches and so many of the big Catholic churches. Okay, and actually here this is almost the center of Cairo. We're gonna see some of the Catholic churches. They are very big. And they have schools belong to them. Here, almost each Catholic school, each Catholic church, it had a, church, a school. The Catholic education here, the Catholic education, it has a very, very high repetition. All the parents, they dream. They're really dreaming to send their kids to the Catholic schools, even the Muslim people. Actually, the majority of these schools, they are from the Muslims, you know? So, they are opening, you know, the, the, the Catholic schools, they are opening for everybody. I mean, they do look at the religion when you go to apply for your kids there. They do look at the, you, what is your religion to accept your kids in the school or not? They are accepting anyone, okay? But actually, you have to apply before and, you know, it's very, very long procedures. And actually, they are not expensive like in the Philippines. Here, they are very, very cheap. You know, you know. I may show you some of these um, uh, schools with the churches here in this area. Something we need to know about Cairo, because you might ask me these questions. In some areas in Cairo, you see them very nice, nice houses, uh, clean, green, more organized. And in some other places, you see like very old, random houses that were built randomly. Cairo here is a city of contrasts city of contrast. I mean, in some places you see them very good, some other places you cannot imagine that they're still in the same city. This contrast, here, this is the church. Can you see that there's a school behind there? There's a school behind it. And there's also one more here. Can you see here? This is also Catholic. Can you see the cross over the school? Over the school, yeah. And here also this is a Catholic school. Okay, can you see this building here, the right-hand side? This is a very historical building, very historical place here. This is the second oldest railway in the whole world. Railway station, the second oldest railway station in the whole world. Egypt is the second country in the world to have the trains, to have the railway, after London. It was first London and then Egypt. We have the trains here in Egypt since 1858. 1858. So just up along we have, you know, the trains here. Okay, so actually, because of the traffic, so we didn't feel like, you know, the, the road. But, uh, you know, we almost arrived into the museum. I need to tell you something about the museum when we get there. Especially about the cameras, taking pictures inside of the museum. Taking pictures inside of the museum, this is chargeable. Three dollars for taking pictures inside. You want to take pictures inside of the museum that cost three dollars for using or for taking pictures inside so let me tell you about the cameras we have three options 
for the cameras here. You either bring your camera. I'm talking about the photo cameras, not about the cell phones here now. You may bring your camera. So you buy a ticket for three dollars so that you can use inside as much as possible, as much as you want. Per person, per device. Okay. Number two, you leave the camera here in the bus, it'll be okay. No worries, it'll be very, very safe. Option number three, which I don't like it, but this is still an option. You may bring the camera. You can use it only in the garden of the museum. So you can take some pictures of the garden. But before we enter to the museum, we have to leave the cameras in the check-in of the museum. Okay? Cell phones, tablets, we bring this with us. We all bring cell phones and tablets with us. Why? Because... This we can use in the garden, there's no problem. And if you want to use inside, you buy the ticket. If you didn't want to use inside and you didn't, want it, you didn't want to buy the ticket, so you can keep it in your pocket. You get it? Yes. Not, the, not, not, not the cameras. Not the cameras. Cameras are not allowed inside the museum without a ticket. But cell phones, they may go inside the museum without a ticket, that's okay. Because the cell phones, this is something personal. Something. But you cannot take pictures. In general, in general, taking pictures inside of the museum, there must be for a ticket for $3. For so, I need to know now who are interested in taking pictures and buying the ticket to take pictures inside the museum. So Adder will buy the tickets for us, three dollars. The three dollars, this we collect later, not now. There's no time to collect now. Is there anyone who's interested to in take pictures inside the museum? We need to decide now. Is there anyone who's taking pictures, buying tickets? Okay, please I touch the hands. Just one from the group. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, 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 Okay, ten minutes already. Excuse me. Where, where are you hiding? Where are you hiding your phone? Where are you keeping your phone? <laughs> okay, I may repeat it once again later. TP Link. TP Link. TP Link. This is the username. TP Link. If you find it, use TP Link. Find it? Okay. Uh, Adele, they will kill you now. Zero. One five. 
No, wait, wait, this is not in the password. Again? <laughs> One, five, zero. One, five, one, two, nine. One more time. One, five, zero. One, five, one, two, nine. Father joined it by the way. Yeah, because he's sitting in the front, so he's near the router. <laughs> Ready? Yes, we are in the breakfast room. Okay, so um, we don't want you to just stay maybe for the half day with the empty stomach. So we arrange it for a breakfast before we start the tour. Okay, so actually after the breakfast we go to visit to the Egyptian Museum. You see the collection of the King Tutankhamun. Have you heard of the King Tutankhamun? Yes. King Tut? Yes. King Tut. King T U T yes, not T in the T T U T. Okay, two ten common, and then um, after that we go to see the to visit the churches of the old Cairo. We visit uh, Abu Sergia or San Sergius Church. We visit also the hanging church. Hanging church. It's not because they were hanging the people there, but actually when I arrive there, I will tell you why we call it the hanging. Tomorrow. You know, tomorrow when we are fresh, when we are good at sleeping and everything, so tomorrow we're gonna have, tomorrow actually we're gonna have the permits, Sphinx and shopping. This is for tomorrow. Today we're gonna have uh, the museum, Coptic churches, okay? And then we eat lunch, okay? And then in the afternoon, not in the afternoon, the dinner tonight, the dinner tonight, we're gonna eat the dinner in a boat. Sailing on the Nile wow. for one and a half hour. No, with something with with someone which is more important than Cleopatra, with a belly dancer. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, but for the boys, we book them another restaurant somewhere else to hear the dance. No, I cannot risk and take the boys to the boat, you know, to see the belly dancer. So we <laughs> shall I take the boys with us? No, of course, I, okay. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be for everybody. So, I mean, the, the boat with the dinner, with the beer dancing, so we go all together. This is uh, gonna be from 5.30, 5.30 till 7 o'clock tonight. And then we come back to the hotel to get our rest. Because tomorrow we, uh, uh, tomorrow we uh, start uh, with the pyramids tomorrow. Okay, so we uh, go to the pyramids, spend good time there, we see the Sphinx, and then we go shopping, we eat lunch, we eat Egyptian food for for the lunch to, tomorrow. And for the dinner tomorrow, we're gonna eat, the dinner tomorrow we're gonna eat in Hard Rock Cafe. Hard Rock. Yes, Hard Rock. We're gonna eat in Hard Rock. So we try to like give you know varieties for the food you know i mean uh today we're gonna eat for lunch like international food for the dinner this is a buffet for the uh lunch tomorrow we're gonna eat egyptian food for the dinner we eat american food hard work cafe so uh okay now we we want to give you something we're gonna give you water okay of course we have water with you so we either we give you the water now uh, we're going to give you water. This is free water all the time in the bus. Free water all the time here in the bus. At any time you need water, we're going to give you water. You know, here in the bus. So, uh, even when you go to the restaurant, 
We'll give you the water to take to the restaurants, but sometimes some of the restaurants they don't agree the people to take the drinks with us with them. So in this case, we're gonna give you the the water and the tables inside. So don't worry about this, okay? So at any time you need water, we're gonna give you water, okay? So Adel, uh, so I'll give you the water now. Um, Okay, so this water we give you now, you keep for yourself because when you arrive to the restaurant for the breakfast, we're gonna give you water with you there. Okay, so you don't need to carry uh, the water with you inside there. Uh, the place where we eat breakfast today here, this is uh, called District. District. This is a, a big area. It's a, it's a big mall with the restaurants, coffee shops, and uh, you know. So we gonna eat our breakfast here. Oh yes. The day after tomorrow, we need to start early from the hotel in Tehran. So we need to start at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yes, 3 o'clock in the morning. Ah, sleeping in the bus? No, you're not allowed. No, not allowed to sleep in the bus. <laughs> yes, we're going to have uh, sleeping in the bus. It's because we need to uh, visit the monastery of St. Catherine which is close at like 11.45, okay? And also for climbing the Mount Sinai. Who's planning to climb Mount Sinai? May I see the hands? You know, I always like to see that because what happens after is different. <laughs> okay, almost everybody, so actually, okay. We will see after. So, uh, climbing the mountain, that will be at the daytime. Okay, uh, so. We just arrived there, that could be at like 11 o'clock, so we visit the monastery, we eat lunch also in the monastery there. And then for those who will be climbing the mountain, they just go ahead for climbing, and the rest will go to the hotel, which is two hours driving from the mountain. And in Sinai, we stay in a very nice hotel, we stay also in a five-star hotel. It's a very nice hotel by the water of the Red Sea. So if you arrive early to the hotel, you may go uh, have uh, a little swim if you want in the water of the Red Sea. So it's uh... okay. So uh, here we gonna eat our uh, breakfast. Okay. So after that, uh, it's near here. After that, from here we go ahead to the Egyptian Museum and then to the church. Okay. Did you get the water? You got the water? Yeah. When you come back? Okay, so, okay, we'll give you water inside and when we come here, we'll give you water. 